Trouble didn't arrive with alarms or official briefings. It crept in quietly, starting with a routine shipment check in a Rotterdam storage facility. A small tag on a crate simply noted that the origins of its rare earth materials couldn't be confirmed. That was enough to trigger a chain reaction. Within hours, cargo meant for ASML was no longer appearing in digital tracking logs because containers had been pulled aside in Chinese ports. Beijing had just activated a rule requiring verification if even a faint fraction, one-tenth of one percent, of a product contained rare earths processed in China. Suddenly, the tiniest link to Chinese material required a government permit. Factories that usually run non-stop fell silent. Technicians stood beside delicate machines worth hundreds of millions of dollars, powerless to move forward because their components were stuck behind an obscure, newly tightened regulation. This wasn't an act of disruption. It was a policy adjustment. So precise it worked like a valve. One twist, and the most sophisticated chip-making tools on the planet no longer had the materials needed to function. Investors watching from Amsterdam were forced to confront a blunt fact. China is the backbone of the rare earth supply chain, providing almost all the refined elements and specialized magnets, essential for semiconductor equipment. SML's CFO, Roger Dassin, said on October 15th that the company could manage for now but its longer-term stability hinged completely on global trade remaining open. He also disclosed that China accounted for 42% of ASML's revenue in the previous quarter. Meanwhile, governments in the US and South Korea published their own guidance. According to Reuters, the updated rules applied to technology involved in producing 14 nanometer logic chips and advanced memory products with 256 layers or more with each case handled individually. South Korean officials announced they were analyzing the consequences for their heavily chip-dependent firms. The critical detail was that the rule applied internationally. Even if China wasn't part of the final sale, materials originating there were still subject to Beijing's approval. Analysts quickly connected these developments to the broader resource landscape. Research from Alex Partners estimated that China is responsible for roughly 70% of rare earth mining. 85% of refining, and around 90% of the production of rare earth alloys and magnets. These proportions give China enormous influence whenever export licensing is involved. Commentators emphasize that these were not abstract vulnerabilities. Companies were already drawing down reserves because of earlier restrictions put in place in 2025. In the midst of this, the Netherlands introduced a shock of its own. The Dutch government invoked emergency powers to take direct supervisory control of Nexperia a Chinese-owned semiconductor manufacturer in Nijmegen. Ownership didn't change, but the state gained authority to overturn major decisions. A separate court ruling blocked Wingtech's CEO from assuming a key position and transferred most voting rights to a court-appointed administrator. Reuters reported these steps on October 13, describing them as highly unusual. At the same moment, Beijing expanded its export restrictions to cover additional processing stages and specific categories of rare earth-related equipment. The approval system had transformed into a multi-tiered filter. Some materials outright banned, others requiring multiple levels of review, defense-linked customers prohibited, and advanced chip-related goods subjected to heightened scrutiny. Dassin later summed up the situation in practical terms. ASML could manage short-term disruptions, but if the tightening continued, the company's supply chain would be at risk. The reason was embedded in the machines themselves. Their motors, optics, positioning modules, and precision materials rely on rare earth magnets and compounds that almost all come from China. ASML's incoming orders made this dependence even clearer. Nearly half of the company's quarterly demand came from Chinese clients, even as the firm predicted flat revenue in 2026, despite rising AI-driven interest. On October 9th, the Wall Street Journal reported that China's 0.1% rule would force countless lithography components into China's approval system, calling the scale of the policy nearly unprecedented. Policy momentum shifted again when Reuters revealed that China had temporarily paused its restrictions on exports of gallium, germanium and antimony to the U.S. diplomats interpreted the move as part negotiation tactic, part political signaling. European officials also noted small indications that Beijing might slow or modify some of its rare earth controls. These contradictory movements made planning nearly impossible. A rule could tighten in one area while easing in another. The Nexperia case showed another pattern emerging. Trade restrictions can provoke countermeasures. After pressure from European industry groups and prolonged diplomatic talks, Bloomberg reported via Reuters that the Dutch government might reconsider its move if Chinese chip shipments to Europe resumed under certain exemptions. This highlighted a feedback loop. National security measures create supply pressure, which then pushes governments to adjust their own restrictions, 
simply to keep production lines active. The vulnerability facing the chip equipment industry stretches far beyond ASML's final machines. It reaches into a dense global web of suppliers, laser modules, vacuum pumps, optical stages, metrology systems, each one containing materials that link back, at some stage, to China's rare earth system. In October, China introduced new rules tightening oversight of the mining and processing of rare earths. These materials are crucial for electric motors, energy technologies, and semiconductor manufacturing. Beginning December 1st, any foreign company that uses Chinese rare earths or Chinese-built equipment must obtain a Chinese license before exporting its finished products. This mirrors the United States' extraterritorial export controls. With both countries extending their rules beyond their own borders, companies must now consider licensing requirements from the very first steps of product design, rather than at the point of shipment. Manufacturers in the auto, energy, and defense sectors have been monitoring rare earth trends with unusual caution. When China first signaled tighter controls earlier this year, the IMF noted a brief price spike, yet futures markets still imply only mild increases through 2026. Investors seem to believe any turbulence will come in short bursts following new policy announcements, rather than a sustained surge. The IMF also pointed out that China's earlier permit system created a sudden shock that disrupted stock levels and procurement schedules. Modern lithography equipment depends not only on optical components, but also on hyper-accurate magnetic assemblies and motion systems built around rare earth magnets. ASML attempted to ease concerns by saying its Chinese buyers were installing tools rather than stockpiling them, though the company still warned that long-term roadmaps for EUV and high NA machines become harder to follow if licensing stays unpredictable. Tech companies are also watching China's thresholds, 14 NIM and 256 layers, because they mirror export control markers used globally. According to Reuters, China will review requests that hit those thresholds individually and reject anything with potential military relevance. As a result, a Dutch tool using an American module and a Japanese magnet could be delayed if even one component involves Chinese material meaning a single unapproved permit can hold up an entire machine worth hundreds of millions. The restrictions are arriving in phases. Five rare earth elements fell under tighter rules in early November, and foreign exporters face a new set of requirements starting December 1st. Firms have only a short window to update bills of materials, submit forms, or identify substitute parts. Magnet suppliers cannot validate alternatives quickly, and car companies face heightened risk. They already burned through their magnet reserves earlier in 2025 because of China's policies, and this time, the buffers are smaller. Europe is particularly exposed since many European components contain Chinese magnet material deep in the supply chain. Reuters also described a situation in the Netherlands where the government temporarily assumed control of Nexperia under an emergency measure. Once supply conditions improved, a court indicated the company could regain authority, suggesting these interventions tend to end when pressure eases. Markets moved immediately. Mining and toolmaking firms in both the U.S. and China saw their shares rise. American companies promoted accelerated domestic processing plans, benefiting from the perception that operations outside China come with fewer political risks. Meanwhile, Beijing sent mixed signals. New restrictions arrived alongside official statements about supporting trade, and China briefly lifted certain U.S.-focused limits on gallium and germanium the metals at the center of previous disputes. This pattern suggests deliberate tightening and loosening to influence negotiations. The Wall Street Journal noted another obstacle. If a product contains more than 0.1% Chinese rare earth content by value, it triggers mandatory approval, making it extremely difficult for high-precision manufacturers to void licensing unless they rebuild entire supply chains. SML's financial data shows the situation is not a downturn. AI demand pushed third quarter orders above expectations. Revenue next year may stay flat, but the real risk is not weak demand. It is the possibility that any single part, magnet, or paperwork delay could slow deliveries. On the diplomatic side, Reuters said a Dutch official expects Nexperia shipments to resume soon indicating at least some approvals are moving forward. Another report suggested China is exploring modest relaxations of rare earth rules, though far from what Washington wants. Both sides keep adjusting policy because each holds leverage. Western countries rely on Chinese materials, and China values both the revenue and the bargaining position that come with supplying them. This tug-of-war complicates long-term planning. The Netherlands is using corporate governance tools to safeguard strategic firms without fully nationalizing them, and the EU may adopt similar strategies.
Companies now plan for two possible worlds. One is strict enforcement, where anything with even tiny amounts, above 0.1% of Chinese rare earth input, requires a license. The other is a softer approach with more exceptions for civilian products. The strict scenario means heavy administrative work and higher costs for non-Chinese magnets. The softer scenario brings delays, but fewer outright barriers. China's recent pause on gallium and germanium restrictions hints at the gentler road. But the October announcement shows the stricter path remains fully possible. A major uncertainty is inventory. ASML says it has enough materials and alternative parts to withstand short-term issues, but offered no figures. If approval timelines become predictable, companies can adapt. If they slow down unpredictably, Stockpiles may empty before replacement parts are qualified. The IMF observed that rare earth prices previously spiked after China tightened rules, yet current futures curves imply eventual stability, meaning traders expect either policy relief or new supply sources to soften the impact. If those expectations are wrong, another price surge will follow. If they are right, bureaucracy rather than shortages will dominate concerns. Across the entire landscape a pattern is emerging. Rules tighten, exemptions appear, courts intervene, companies adjust, and markets hedge, reacting more to administrative bottlenecks than to geological scarcity. If a serious disruption occurs, it likely won't stem from a dramatic headline. Instead, it may come from something small, like a permit left unapproved, halting a machine because a single magnet suddenly requires paperwork that no one anticipated before October.